gotta get up, I gotta get going, I'm gonna see a friend of mine. He's round and he's fuzzy, I love him because he's just Pooh Bear, Winnie the Pooh Bear. Looking for fun, chasing some honeybees, Pooh Bear, I know he's out there. Bumbly tumbly, climbing a honey tree, but never ends for us, we're so adventurous, at least every now and again. And when we're alone, and there's nobody home, it's nice to be able to Take me please, Pooh Bear, I gotta be there It's me and it's you, my silly old Winnie the Pooh What's going on guys, it's John B here I'm back with another one of my new Adventures of Winnie the Pooh episode reviews And thank you for the votes by the way too guys Because what you chose was one of my personal favorites of all the time but not really saying it because it's my personal favorite but because it's just something that you guys chose which i respect of course wholeheartedly and the episode you guys chose was cleanliness is next to impossible this episode is very weird because of the simple fact that it's something that you don't really see usually in the winnie pooh cartoons back in the time and usually another episode where it doesn't really contain any villains either but this one actually does Another reason why this episode is weird is because it's it is not really clear as to if this episode was actually for real or was it all just in the minds of the characters or what or whatever. I don't know. But without further ado, guys, I'm going to go into my personal review of Cleanliness is Next to Impossible from Season 1, Episode 6. So the story begins with a very sepia background look like from the wizard of oz um and it has christopher robin Pooh, piglet and tigger trying to escape into a house that looks very ramshackle to me honestly and they're trying to escape a huge tornado that's trying to chase them down and christopher robin tries to get the basement door open but isn't able to and the tornado catches up and actually sends piglet off his feet and back towards it, and some Pooh and Tigger try to rescue him, but then soon they get lifted up into the air too, and it looks like the poor three had been sucked into the tornado, never to be seen again. But no, it was all just an imagination story where we have Pooh, Piglet, and Tigger flying around in the air back onto the bed, or I think right past the bed. And Christopher Robin is trying to get to a, of all things, a fan. That was the reason why they all seem to be flying around in the air in the first place. How that little bee fan did that, who knows? We'll never know about that. But and anyway, when they do, when the fan turn gets turned off uh, finally, uh, we happen to see a mess of things in Christopher Robin's room. And then before long, his mom shows up there to tell him the very same thing that I just said. And she wants him to clean his room, which makes sense because that's what you do if you're, you know, very you know, young child and your mom's telling you to, you know, do your chores, of course. And his room it really did look like it was a mess. Um, but of course, he's upset about this whole thing because he wanted to play ball with Pooh Bear later on in the day. And... Mom tells him that he lost his ball two weeks ago. So then he goes to his yo-yo and then soon finds out that he lost that last week. Then he goes to his roller skates and he lost that yesterday. This is all what she's saying to him. So defeated, Christopher Robin decides to give in and clean his room just like she instructed to. Good smart move. But before she leaves, she goes into her dress pocket and throws him a bar of soap, telling him that his bath earlier in the day was less than adequate. So next time he takes a bath... Use soap to go with water. Good advice. So Christopher Robin is, of course, upset because he wanted to go play with his friends sooner than he had, you know, anticipated. But first things first, you got to clean that room. So Tigger first decides to go ahead and take all of his toys and put them into like a pyramid shape uh, uh, mountain like and have the cover of his bed thrown over everything onto them. So it seems like that they've all disappeared. Of course, we know better. 
We can clearly see that toys are still set in there, just covered up, though. So it's not really getting rid of your toys, though, Christopher Robin. Come on, now. So uh, a little bit later, they go into a song, which is a very catchy song, by the way, too, where you put all the toys underneath the bed. It seems a very smart thing to do to get rid of all the stuff that's covering your room. And it seems like for the time it actually works out, because, but truthfully, though, when you look at the picture here, uh, I don't really call getting rid of all your toys. First off, how many toys can actually uplift a bet like you're freaking uplifting a car and a jack? That's crazy. But they managed to do so. So they have all the toys underneath Christopher Robin's bed. And what happens is that suddenly the toys seem to just disappear from underneath the bed. Like the bed just kind of gobbled them up. And everyone is puzzled by this. And... They happen to see uh, one of Christopher Robin's shoes laying around there on the on the floor. And Pooh tries to throw in the shoe. And then suddenly, the shoe just comes flying back out. So Tigger decides to go ahead and give a wind up and the pitch. And throw it into the bed. And then <laughs> actually hits him from behind the head. So that doesn't work. And then Pooh Bear goes to try his luck once again to throw the, the shoe back underneath the bed. And it comes to flying into Tigger again, but this time somehow manages to knock Tigger and Christopher Robin into a closet, trapping him inside. Strange. But suddenly we hear an ominous voice underneath the bed saying, No more shoes, please. We already have one. Puzzled by this, Pooh and Piglet decide to... Well, really, it's Pooh's idea trying to find out who said that underneath the bed. And Pooh and Piglet, you know, is, which makes sense. He would be afraid to do so. But Pooh Bear says that it's important to respond back to a person. Otherwise, to take as being impolite. Personally, I wouldn't really care. Especially if it sounds like a monster. But Pooh decides to go investigate. This, who exactly said that underneath the bed? And in doing so, he gets sucked underneath the bed and Piglet as well. And Tigger and Chris Robin are still trying to bang the way out of the closet. How they get locked in the first place, I have no idea unless the latch on there was probably like, pressed in or something. But Pooh and Pig are helplessly being whisked away into what seems to be a very magical world that's underneath the mattress. And so they keep on flying towards the portal into the world underneath the bed. And then by this time... Tigger and Christopher Robin finally freed themselves from the closet, and they notice that Pooh and Piglet are missing. So, Pooh and Piglet actually wind up in the under the bed world, and it seems to have like a bunch of Christopher Robin's junk or toys underneath the bed. Now, what I like about the scenery here is the fact that you can clearly see the light in the background that looks like that they're actually in the room still, but they've actually been miniaturized into the world where it seems like everything now is bigger than they are which it is actually and they're trying to find out where they're where they are where the bearings are at we suddenly get in, uh, interrupted by a bunch of guards that are shaped by crayons that come take them away and Pooh thinks they're going to take them to Christopher Robin but um, as we learn later on it's not quite like that though so Christopher Robin and Tigger are still trying to find Pooh and, and Piglet and they there's like a funny scene where Tigger is trying to look everywhere from behind the dresser to thinking that the cover has like a big lump in itself. It's actually Pooper hiding underneath the, the cover, but it's not. It's just a pillow underneath the cover. So then Christopher Robin sees the shoe that he was trying to get rid of underneath the bed in the first place, and he suspects that he's actually gone under the bed, thinking that he's lost him. So Tigger says to just go ahead and try to find them, and before they could do anything else, Christopher Robin says, I mean, because sucks into the bed. And then before long, Tigger's gone under the bed as well, too. Sucked into it. We go to commercial break at this point, but before we go to a commercial break, we hear this ominous laughter in the background underneath the bed, too. <laughs> so whatever that was, I'm pretty sure it's not friendly. So when we come in from the commercial break, we happen to go into the underneath the bed world where now everyone is, um, where everyone is right now. And the search for Pill and Piglet continues. And then we get to a point where Chris Robin sees a card that's on end that I gave him three years ago. And of course, everything is bigger now because now they've actually been shrunk down to the size of, 
you know, like toys themselves. And everything now is bigger than they are. So the cars can be bigger too. And um, they later on come across a strange looking character that's made of dust and just sneezes uncontrollably. He calls himself Smudge. And he informs Christopher Robin about the crud that wants to meet him. So the crud, I'm sorry. So Smudge leads Christopher Robin and Tigger all the way to a castle that looks like a shoe. And uh, the crayon guards all come out to, you know, welcome Christopher Robin and Tigger into the castle that's like a shoe. And one of the crayon guards notices Christopher Robin saying, it's the boy. You know, like it's something that he probably feels that you know, they've been enslaved by this monster and actually, you know, maybe he'll do something to save everyone from, from his control. And then later on, we go inside the castle and then we see a very creepy hand made of slime lure Chris Robin over to him to a pool. And then before long, we have the evil, humongous, disgusting slime creature known as the crud make his appearance by the way fun fact now jim cummings is the voice of pooh bear for the cartoon but i had no idea that he's actually was was the voice of uh crud and smudge in his cartoon too talk about multitasking and it worked though it's very very well done so christopher robin goes to um introduce himself to uh, crud and then crud says that everyone knows him down here especially himself you know, that he made all this possible by putting all the things underneath the bed. So he, um, so Chris Robin and Tigger decide to, you know, try to find Pooh and Piglet because they get the uneasy feeling about being anywhere near the crud because it's so terrifying looking. And then he says something behind, um, he says something to Tigger about, you know, wanted to clean up down here. Like, well, I might want to clean up down here because that's so all the things that are in this world is what he, you know, accidentally created from that. So the crowd gets angry as heck and he says, Clean up? Did you say clean up? No one cleans up down here. So then he has Smudge unveil a um, pull a cord actually. And before long, we have a huge slime wall appear. And then what it reveals afterwards is a huge vacuum cleaner. But as all of the toys that belong to Christopher Robin that are doing something to, um, I guess, like make it work or pump it up or something. And of course, all the toys at this point are very sad looking because they're being, you know, they're slaves and in order to make this vacuum work the way that he wants to. So the yo-yo is the one that is the one that says um, his part about it's me as he's pouring some slime into the uh, nozzle of the vacuum but he knows it's Christopher Robin and then Christopher Robin tries to go to him and then the crayons hold him back and then Christopher Robin's upset because he's he sees his toys being forced into doing something with the vacuum cleaner and he wants to know what so the crud calls the vacuum his unvacuum. it works in reverse where it does um it spews out all the stuff, all the dirt that's trapped inside of it. So instead of sucking things in, it's just going to spew things out. And when he has enough things built up into it, he's going to take his reign over the entire world. As well as his bedroom first. So this just disgusts Tigger. And because of this, it makes the crown guards grab him and take him away to the prison. So Christopher Robin is upset about this too. And then he wants to know where Bill and Piggle are. And the crud says that they are safe for now, but there would be no cleaning up. In fact, he's going to make everything be dirty along with him, or he'll never see his friends again. So Christopher Robin decides to, you know, say that he's done enough messing up for a long time now. And from now on, he was going to do his best, do his best to clean things up too. And saying clean around the crud infuriates him. And besides that, Chris Robin locked up now, too. So then we go to Pooh, Piglet, and Tigger, who are in prison in a prison of, like, dominoes all around the area there for them. And they try to contemplate about a plan to escape and save Chris Robin and do something about the corrupt monster. So Pooh 
being a very, very, very little brain, decides to say that it's best to just escape first. And first, Tigger is kind of like, like, that's it? But Pooh Bear said, yes, very much so. And it makes sense because you have to first get out before you can do anything about the problem first. <laughs> and um, we have Piglet who's trying to, that's very disgusted by all the dirt and dust that's, that's near there. So he goes to wipe the floor and then he actually reveals what really is an exit that goes out to the bottom. And so this makes the floor collapse and then Piglet, Pooh, and Tigger fall below on the top of a crayon guard that's a color of red and so piglet is worried that they made the guard angry and pooh bear says something about oh don't worry piglet he's always been that very shade of color aren't you and then the red crayon guard says oh <laughs> he chases him down <laughs> he goes to chase him down and um i think they easily do away with him somehow and then for long they're met by a huge group of crayons that are going to attack them, and they, uh, crayon guards, they decide to, like, make those into cannons and shoot what seems to be wax color blotches at them, trying to stop them. And they come across one of the roller skates that Chris Robin had lost before, and they use the skate to act like a bowling ball and just bowl right through the crayon guards. And they say, We're coming, Christopher Robin! And we hear this loud crash with the roller skate breaking. And, of course, they're going to get there, but not by skate. So, in the next scene, we have um, Pooh, Piglet, and Tigger disguise themselves as a crayon guard. Not very well, but it's still passive enough to actually make them not be seen or noticed by the guards there, though. So, they go one direction to where the, uh, what do you think was Robin could be at, while the crayon guards go in their own direction. I'm going to go to the three. And um, they see Christopher Robin um, in a cage, but he's like too big for the cage, actually. <laughs> and Piglet says something like, look, they put Christopher Robin to bed. So the three break Christopher Robin out of his um, bed prison, which I thought was kind of hilarious, actually. And Pooh says they need to get going before the crayons find them. But soon after, the crayons do find them. So they run for their lives against the crayon army. And then they get to the uh, doors when they get on the other side, they slam the door shut, making the crayons just crash into what I guess it seemed to be a big puddle of color wax. Go figure. I really hope that the crayon guard that said, it's the boy, was among them because that'd be very sad to be done in by the very same boy that you wanted to rescue you. That would be really bad. But this would seem like that everything's in the clear. The four come face to face with the humongous corrupt monster again. But this time, Christopher Robin says up to him again, telling him that he's going to do what he can to defeat him and doing things the clean way. Not quite like that, but something close to it, though. So this makes the crud angry, and he grabs Christopher Robin, trying to destroy him. And then he notices, um, Pooh Bear notices something in Christopher Robin's shorts pocket, the bar of soap that his mama gave to him earlier. So he uses the bar of soap like a weapon and shines it to his face. It's got like that nice shiny effect to the uh, to the uh, to the soap bar, and the crowd just kind of like, no, keep it away, keep it away. Ah, oh! yeah, he hates clean things. He does. And um, what happens later on is that the uh, yo-yo gets all the toys right up to attack the crowd too with the vacuum cleaner that he wanted them to use to uh, make things messy. And as they go to plug it up first, Chris Robin's telling the toys to not plug the machine up because it works backwards. But Tigger informs him that the yo-yo was actually able to make the vacuum work normally again. So instead of spewing things out, it now sucks things in. And the vacuum sucks up both the crub and the smudge monster is a session. And so now the crud has been defeated and the toys have been freed and everything is you know, all nice again now. And then we have this scene where this wall of smoke comes up. And that's the part that kind of confused me because was it actually for real or just a dream or just an imagination scene or whatever? I, I don't know. But after battling with the crud and what the crud can create if you keep up the chance to give it a chance to mess things up, he decides to uh, clean his room up the right way, put everything in order again, make it where nothing ever get a chance to get crudded ever again. And then the mom comes in later on and then he sees she sees that he, um, you know, was... He did a very impressive job with cleaning up his room. 
So, uh, but she finds a lone sock on the floor, and she get ready. To, she was getting ready to throw it underneath the bed again. And then Chris Robin stopped her and saying that no, I will never give Karate a chance to mess anything up ever again, and throws it in that clothes hamper instead. And um, after this. The mom was so happy with him taking responsibility for his room that she decided to let him go play with his friends. But then he says that, nope, it's time to take a bath now, and with the bar of soap that she had given him. And this astounds her so much that she says in the end of the episode, Christopher Robin? Yeah, that's a big turnaround for the episode. The story was really good. I kind of like the episode a lot because it deals with being orderly, being clean, you know, Take responsibility for your personal self and your hygiene as well, too. And to not let things get too out of control before long things do get out of control, we can't do much about it. So I guess it's kind of like a lesson learned that, you know, sometimes if you happen to be, you know, living in a crudded area, or have a crud state of mind, you're going to be soon uh, done in by crud. That's what the thing was telling you, actually. Well, guys, that's the end of my episode review, and I give the episode a 10 out of 10. That's my personal uh, perk on it. And I hope that you enjoy my talking about the episode for you guys, too. I hope that you enjoyed the review as well. And if you get a chance to watch the episode, too, it's on Disney+, Plus, and it's a really good episode, too. And I really appreciate Jim Cummings being the, the voice for Pooh Bear, Crud, and Smudge all at the same time. So, guys, next I'm going to make my uh, my poll for my next review that I'm going to look into. What well, will you choose the um, episode once again? And whatever, guys, you choose, I'll do it for you guys. All right, everyone, that's been my review for Dino for the Pooh. Take care, guys, and I'll see you again real soon.